was telling you what free will is. Free will, when many people are, are talking about free will or they are teaching people about free will, eh? or the perspective of what free will is to many people, they think that free will eh, is choosing about the good and evil. It is not. That I have the free will to choose either the right path or the wrong path. It is not. And yet again, the same thing of choosing the, the path of light and darkness is part of the free will. Number one. When you come into this life, I am always telling people you are here as gods in training. When you come into this life, Shia, everything is handed to you. You lack nothing. When you are told that you are the likeness of the image of God, when you come here, you lack nothing. Therefore, this is where you start practicing your free will. Pulling forth experiences. All these experiences we are experiencing, we are, we are experiencing them through our free will. We are picking, we are creating our outer rea reality, no matter how negative they might be, they are out of our free will from within us. So free will is much broader. We are practicing it every day. We are practicing it every day. When a soul comes in, it, it has a soul contract which, may, which uh, indicates the lessons which are supposed to be experienced. It is given everything, all the the weapons, all the capabilities to walk themselves through those experiences they want to learn. We are given all the answers. We are given everything here. We are given everything. So when you pull a negative situation outside, you should be able to have an answer to that. And you can only have an answer to a question when you accept that this what has been asked is a question. You can never have an answer to a question which you refuse that it is a question. So it is very, very, very tricky. We are given everything and people don't know that eh? that uh, Answers, eh? Answers, questions, do, do, questions or circumstances don't appear because they want answers and solutions. It is because of the presence of the answers and solutions in the consciousness. That's why questions are arising. Questions are arising out of the answers so that the answers can be realized there are the answers which wants to be discovered that's why they are raising questions so whenever any circumstance comes around or a questions comes around or any questions which pops in your mind Sheila it is not seeking for an answer there is an answer somewhere it was seeking for that question seek for that answer tell you and tell it hey your question is there you combine that. That's why I'm telling people everything is perfect. Everything, Sheila, everything is perfect. There is nothing wrong in this world. We are just experiencing abundance. And we are, we are experiencing God. Sheila, let me tell you, people should just wake up. No matter how crazy this place is, we are experiencing the abundance of God. I'm telling you, God, on the sixth day before he rested, behold, he saw what he had created as good. And when God does not create half, and everything is God, nothing exists outside of God, therefore he gives, immediately on the sixth day before he went to relax, 
on the seventh day he had put abundance of everything of himself so what he creates i create light i create darkness i create i bring good i bring evil i the lord god does them all those are the abundances of god therefore they are all here people should, should stop having that notion that the world is crazy the world is is ungodly they are going the paths which are not of god hey we are experiencing the abundance of god we are experiencing god we are experiencing god that's why he says eh? he says you don't go to him with your blah 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 you only go to god with one thing thanksgiving Shila. the reason why you are supposed to go to god with thanksgiving is because what you have put not as an individual to your reality what you have put out of your free will god brought it forth all negative Shila, all negative circumstances situations we are not separate from them we are committed to that in one way or another we are the ones who bring them forth therefore out of our free will we don't we brought forth negative experiences by our wrong thoughts our wrong emotions we put that that is the abundance of god and god gave us when we we have nice emotions and good thoughts good reality happens outside of us god gives us to give them gives them to us therefore we have only to go to god with and that's what god wants because there is nothing which humanity has asked either an individual or in a collect in the total collective consciousness there is nothing which we have asked that god has not given us Shula, there is nothing which you have asked which God has not given you. People should know this. Oh, I am uh, having a problem and struggling here there. You are the right place at the right time. Your soul is at the right place. You are connected to that which you are experiencing. That is who you are out of your own free will. We are not supposed to go to God. Give, give, give me Sheila. Give, give me, this is we are not that. We are not that. Especially this human race of this galaxy, of, uh, of this planet. Sheila, if we just knew who we are, eh? hmm? if we, if we just knew that who we are as humanity sure we are something else i'm telling you minister that give me give me god give me that god protect me shila the other time I, I, i told you something and i don't know if you took it seriously god has got no business with us right now his only business is our connection to him through the Christ within everyone he has got no any other he has nothing if he drops your physicality right now he will come empty handed with nothing he has nothing else to give us he has given us the most valuable thing which is part of himself which is in that part is himself by itself So unless you there is another infinite creator you can uh, ask for something else there but for God he has given us everything out of our free will we get to to pull forth all our crazy situations all our crazy experiences and everything and people should know that whatever is uh, whatever reality we are experiencing whatever interactions we are experiencing in our daily lives people are brought into our lives 
out of our own energetic attraction to that. Our wives and our husbands are not crazy. Sheila, we are the ones who are crazy. I'm telling people, immediately you see something outside there. Yeah? It has nothing to do with that person. Sheila, every circumstance outside, every crazy person and situation outside, by themselves, they have nothing to do with that. It has to do with you. That's why we are told not to deny anything, never to deny anything. Immediately you deny anything, you have denied yourself because everything is presented to you in accordance to your consciousness, the level of consciousness. When you deny that, you can never rise up, Sheila, unless you accept that I are uh, here. I got a, a crazy wife here. I got a crazy family. I got crazy friends. Every I got there's a crazy situation. This is me. You are overwhelmed. Participate. Don't figure out even what is that which you have to learn there. Be present there, and knowing that too is of God, and your soul will guide you accordingly. Don't figure out anything. What is that you have to learn? And put your intellectual mind. Sheila, when you just in your breath and you are participating and you just know that God is this one is a tool of God. Period. Solutions come. You cannot deny anything because out of your free will you brought everything to your experience. And many people are getting stagnated to situations and experience and happiness and discomfort outside of them because of the denial. But you deny, I always say what you deny, you have put into the hole of darkness. And as it is attached to you, it calls you there. Where you put it, it calls you there and you will be pleasant there because it has not. It has not denied you. Immediately it calls you down the hole of darkness. You have to be present there in that hole of darkness and experience that when it is in the depths of the holes of darkness. It's knowing, it's just knowing, Sheila, it's knowing about thyself. Only know thyself, mankind. thyself. It's not about dramas outward. Outside there everything is perfect. If someone is crazy, you have a crazy wife, they are perfect. Because that craziness is in the state of perfection. That's why it's triggering you. Yes, they are evil. Someone is evil, they are perfect. The reason why you are experiencing the evil in them because the evil is in the state of perfection. Everything is perfect here in this realm. Everything is perfect as it is and everything is manifestation of God. Everything is God by itself. Everything is divine. If you walk with this knowing, you can you won't get troubled. A crazy person comes to you, they start to you, tell them, relax. Be at peace. You are perfect. You are perfect. You are perfect. But me, I claim the God in you. I claim the divine in you. This perfection is of God. I claim upon the altar of this perfection. Yours is to claim the altar of everything. Sheila, yours is to claim the altar of everything in existence. In everything. It's not about thinking that now this one, 
hapa hakuna Mungu. Kile the way people say, "Eh, hey, hapa hakuna Mungu." Eh. Hey, hey, hey. Who said there's no God? Any you will see religious people they will tell you in a situation or circumstance that eh hey, maze in this situation there's no God. They are they are foolish. Sure, they are foolish with capital letters underlined bold. The same moment they are telling they are preaching that God is omnipresent and that they are telling you here there is no God in this situation. Omnipresence means God being everywhere in everything at each and every moment. Nikombe the other time I I told you the only things that are ungodly that are not divine that which are not of god are the things which humanity has put outside of god that to god himself is not aware of those things that humanity has put outside that he is not aware that anything exists outside of himself but humanity is aware of the things outside of god this is how foolish we are to God, nothing exists outside of Him. But humanity, there are things which we took and we took from God and put them outside of God. We deny things, and as I always say, and as I always say, and as I always say, it's like this: eh? when we are denying something. When you are denying something, eh? the same thing you are denying. Maybe you are seeing a drunkard in a pers- another person. Ah, this lady likes sleeping with each and every man, and it triggers you. It's not good, Sheila. Nothing is brought to you or brought to your reality for entertainment purposes. Nothing. When everything you are denying outside of yourself. There is always something else related to that within you, which you are denying that it is in you. When you see that, when you see another lady, yeah, this lady is sleeping with other man, and triggers you. It has been brought to your reality, and it triggers you, Sheila. You also want to sleep with men, but you don't have, you don't get the chance. You can't figure out how, how. When I mean, if I could do that, it's something you are. Struggling with within. Let me tell you a story. I was in some uh, some uh, church before, and they were praying that they were prayers that day of they were praying about drunkard like families with the uh, husbands who are drunkards, and they were praying and people were praying with tongues, and they were praying with tongues. For their husbands to stop drinking, zap 360 degrees. Then there was a wedding in that church. I was the one who said, who was to carry the food from where it was being cooked to the place where people were going to. I think it was people were going to eat at church to bring the food at church. Sheila, let me tell you one thing. We went to that place to pick food. There was a crate of beer. Guinness. I went there with the ones who were in charge of the food were the intercessory team and they were the leaders during the prayers for praying for husbands. Issues of drinking. And when we reached there, Sheila, let me tell you one thing. They eat I don't know what happened. One opened one bottle and everyone was drinking beer. Everyone should have. What I'm telling you is not it's not it's not a story to motivate anyone. It is true story. And they were they started drinking and I was told what happens in Rome stays in Rome. The whole intercessory team of that church, a very big church, the whole intercessory team 
they were drinking plus the leader of the intercessory team and that thing I even realized it came to me three days ago like wow it is true anything you deny you are struggling with it's because it is in you you are struggling with that in one way or another and I was told everything that happens in Rome stays in Rome and when we left Rome I kept quiet I kept quiet and I was offered another beer because what happens in Rome remains in Rome but there is another thing when you go to Rome you do what Romans do so when I was offered a bottle of beer, Sheila, guess what? I drank too. This is a true story. When you go to Rome, you do what Romans do. And what happens in Rome? Stays in Rome. So everyone is struggling. When someone else is self-righteous and they are seeing another person as a prostitute, they too are struggling with the same thing inside. There is something there within you. Nothing is presented to you, to your reality for entertainment purposes. There is something you are struggling with. Like you are, you are thinking, wow, what if she is enjoying a lot of men? It is there within you, but because you have that cover which you are, you are wearing outside you say you are in salvation you are denying that because it is in you you also there is someone who you want to experience every man Shiva, don't deny anything I appreciate that it is in existence that God this too is of God and out of this I claim the divine everything is of God Shila everything that's why eh? if you don't believe me I'll tell you one thing the reason why everything is of God is why is because you people can find love in a bar or a club. They can find love in a brothel, but they cannot find it in a house of worship. They will be happy in a club, in a bar. They will be happy in a brothel, but they will never be happy in a house of worship. In a house of worship, you can find two haters in the same building, praising and worshiping God. Two haters, but in a club, you cannot find two haters dancing together. So it is a two. It is a, a two-way traffic. The reason why Jesus tells people, "Do not judge." It is not judging people in the situation. Not do not judge anything. Do not judge because the reason why he said do not judge or condemn is because there is nothing to judge. Everything is of God. Everything is of God. Like Jesus when he was here Jesus when he was here He walked with drunkards And let me tell you one thing Sheila Forget about religious things Jesus Let me tell you This one I'm certainly sure Jesus drank wine 100% which is alcohol He drank alcohol You cannot walk with drink, uh, drunkards you can ne not go to a wedding and when you see people bored and you ask them, hey, I say, then, I'm break, I'm then people tell you, Akuna Mzinga. Then you, you tell them, bring drums of water, I show you something. And everyone was happy. I think the issue is, uh, is not necessarily to drink wine, the issue is to get drunk. Yes, and exactly. We lose Shira, what people control. do not know is the same thing we are talking about every day. It's about balance. Mm -hmm. uh, because, everything in because, moderation. Uh, 
things are necessary, but not, not all things are. Not all things are allowed, but not everything is necessary. You know, is it needful? Like, Sheila, let me tell you one thing. Eh? Now, say, there was uh, this lawyer guy eh, which we used to live with in Likoni. Sheila. This guy was a drunkard. Now, say, he, na, it was many, 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 many years ago. And this drunkard, eh, I don't know. Yani, after I grew up many, many years, after, like, it was like uh, 40 years ago. This guy was a drunkard, but Shira, let me tell you, he was just full of love. When he's drunk, the distance from the road to our house was like uh, 200 meters or 300 meters. But immediately, he will just drop out from a vehicle at the roadside. He will, children will be running after him, drunk. And we will take time to sit down and talk to kids. We will find him with 30 and 40 kids. He is drunk talking to them. He buys food for them and he talks to them stories. Stories and he was loved. And let me tell you one thing. People in the area, out of what he was, out of his drunk abuse, eh? he was the jewel. He was the jewel of the area all parents loved him that man was he was a drunkard still a drunkard until he admitted to himself but he will never in a, in our in the corner in our area no matter how drunk he is and he has fallen down asleep on the roadside people will leave him people will carry him people men will take him to his house clean him and put new clothes on him and put him on bed until he wakes up. The guy was drunk, but let me tell you, he touched very souls. That's what I'm telling people. God is everywhere. People experienced God. That was an experience of God in a drunkard. That moment you are judging somebody else, you are failing to experience that which is within that. You are stuck to the physicality. You are in a carnal. You are of carnal. In flesh. You are just coming to judgment. Through physical appearances, identities of that man, and what he has been defined to be a drunkard. That's why when, when I'm telling you, claim the divine in everyone. This is a drunkard, but you claim the divine, you are going to experience, experience the divine. 